Hey there viewers and welcome back to the self-made auto channel. So I got a 2008 Pontiac Torrent. It's got the 3.4 litre. Uh, the money lights on. It's got a pretty common problem. Uh, I'm going to bring you guys along and, and kind of show you what's up because it's an often misdiagnosed problem uh, or something that can be you know very easily overlooked. Uh, so I'm going to show you what's up. So I'm just going to zip you down through my diagnostic process. Uh, this car came in for a oil change. The engine light's not on currently, uh, but the lady asked me if I would, you know, could give her an insight as to what is going on, or what was going on, or could be going on, because evidently the light comes on and off often, and it seems to be, you know, uh, goes along with, you know, how much fuel's in it, which, you know, immediately tells me, you know, we're gonna have an EVAP issue because if it's, you know, below a quarter, or above three quarters, it's not going to run the EVAP monitor. So you know your light will come on and off. Um, but you can see we got a you know a pass failed in history code for a PO455 large EVAP leak. Uh, she says that she has three different gas caps that she carries with her and keeps them rotated out, and that seems to keep the the light coming on and off. I don't I don't really know what that means, but uh, at any rate, what we'll do uh, because we have a large leak and it has a new gas cap, we will pop in and we will just look at some EVAP data just to see fuel tank pressure sensor it's going to be the big one we want to make sure it's not skewed or stuck um, so right now our fuel tank pressure sensor is about 1.5 volts that's normal on a GM our vent solenoids open you know I uh, got no pressure in the tank uh, so everything looks good there and then what we can do uh, the car is hot right now so it's always my habit, we'll go like this, we'll pop in, we will close the vent solenoid now with the fuel vapors in the tank being hot, theoretically, when we close it, so we want to take, make sure that we hear it click, we do hear it clicking back there, so we're going to close the uh, canister vent valve, and technically, over time, you know, we should start to build pressure here in the fuel tank, depending on how hot it is. So we'll give this a little while. I'll make sure that I can, you know, build pressure. If it doesn't, you know, chances are we do actually have a real leak. Uh, so that's something you can do. So I'll give this a little bit here. Probably would help if I actually closed it. So you can see we are, uh, you know, not venting. And we're going to just slowly increase fuel tank pressure. So, you know, it's no different than having, like, your gas can at home for your lawnmower. And, you know, thing sits out in the sun. And next thing you know, it's, you know, blown up like a balloon. Um, and this is how they do like natural vacuum leak detection uh, So you can see already we have a rise we're up to you know 0.21 millimeters of mercury 0.23 and if we left this closed, it would you know it would just continue to rise so this indicates to me right now We do not have a large leak uh, if we did we would see no increase in uh, fuel tank pressure um, Now this you won't find in a service manual. It's just something that I do myself We'll open the vent back up and we'll see we'll drop back down to you know pretty close to atmospheric pressure you go ahead and start it up for me, Hannah. All right, so the next thing I would do uh, if I'm diagnosed with one of these is we want to make sure we have the ability to pull a vacuum on the tank uh, to make sure the pressure sensor works uh, under negative pressure. So what we'll do is we're going to seal the system off so it is not venting, and then we're going to increase the duty cycle on our purge solenoid. You got to be careful doing this because, uh, you know, it can, it'll suck it down pretty quick. And you can see right here, we're commanding our purge solenoid at 50%. And our fuel tank pressure is just slowly increasing from being capped off. Uh, that immediately gives us direction. If we were at 50% and let's say our fuel tank pressure sensor was stuck, you would really hear the engine chuggling right now as it sucks in, you know, uh, fuel vapors. But at this point, it's safe to say that we have, um, you know, we're not having any vacuum applied to the fuel system or to the uh, fuel tank. So we're going to back back out of here and we're going to take a look right now at the purge solenoid. Oh, you got the key on, Hannah? Uh, go ahead and turn the key on. Just flick the headlights off. Uh, so what we're going to do now, we're just going to go. The purge solenoid lives right here. When we turn it on, we should be able to hear it click. Uh, Probably have to wait for the air compressor to shut off over there so you guys can hear that. Uh, but I can hear it clicking away down there. Alright, there we go. So let's go ahead and turn this back on so you guys can hear it clicking. 
We'll increase the duty cycle to it. We'll get up to around 100% and then it should just stay on steady. There we go. So it's on all the way. Uh, so it's definitely clicking. But just like a relay, just because it clicks doesn't mean it's good. Uh, so we're left with two options. Uh, bad purge solenoid, plug vapor line. Uh, they can get plugged with charcoal bits from the canister if the canister got swamped and you know comes apart. Um, you know I've seen that before. You know on, on older S10s and stuff, we used to see that quite a bit. Uh, go ahead and start it up, Hannah. So we're gonna pop back into our purge solenoid test. So right now I've got it at 50% duty cycle. I don't hear it clicking. What we're gonna do, use a test light here with the car running. We just wanna make sure that, you know, not something wacky with the all tell. All right, so we do have control to it. So we'll plug it back in. You can see our fuel tank pressure is still around atmospheric. I don't feel any vacuum on it, we'll stick a gauge on it. We can see we have no vacuum. However, we'll give her one of these. Uh, so at 50% duty cycle, we should be, you know, full manifold vacuum here. There we go. All you gotta do is whack it with a screwdriver, lady. Again, still not working. Let's increase our duty cycle here. And give her some more beans. All right, we're at 90%. Yeah, comes and goes. But so that's it, our diagnosis is over. All right, just blood off on us. You beat on it, it works. So that's it, folks. Go ahead and shut it off, man. So you can easily be let, misled or led astray based on code description, gross evap leak. Um, and the reason that is, you know, when the uh, vehicle goes to test for, you know, an evap leak, it's going to, you know, close the canister vent valve, it's going to open the purge solenoid, you know, pull vacuum on the system, cap it off, you know, look for vacuum decay, and there's no circuit problems on the car, you know, this purge solenoid is working electronically so the best that the uh, ECM can tell is hey you know everything's good I'm commanding it on there's no circuit problems but I'm not seeing a drop in fuel tank pressure um, so at that point the ECM assumes no drop in pressure it's got to be a great big leak throws a code for a large leak even though our purge is just stuck closed so let me grab some tools and we'll swap it out So, and it's just the opposite too, you can have, in which, which is the case, it seems to be more often than not that the purge solenoid is stuck open. But in our case, it's stuck closed. So when they're stuck open, you can also get leak codes um, on like, uh, you know, NVLD systems, start throwing leak codes. So sometimes you want to take a look and see uh, you know, make sure you're not getting bits of charcoal and stuff out of this because if you are, then you know your problem is much further down the line than just that purge valve. But uh, yeah, like Chrysler ESOMs, Chrysler NVLDs, um, Ford NVLDs, you know, we'll see it where these purge solenoids will actually stick open and uh, when the car shuts off to go into its, you know, engine off, you know, leak detection mode. Uh, stuck open purge solenoid will give a false. 
uh, sensation that there's a you know a, a leak. Well, I guess it's not false. It is a leak, but it's not in the conventional spot like we would think. You know, gas cap, filler neck, you know, canister area, stuff like that. So we'll take put this back on. We'll plug it in. All right, go ahead and start it for us, Hannah. Now we'll put our new purge on. We'll go back into our test here. Go back to our purge solenoid. We should be able to open it, you know, the 10% mark and get back in here. So there we go. That's at 10%. Uh, we'll go back to zero. Get it shut down. There we are, back to zero. This purge solenoid works good. We'll take and hook it back to the. I guess better make sure that it doesn't hold pull any vacuum when it's commanded off. It is BWD. Broke when delivered. We'll plug that back in. Now what we can do is we'll pop back in here. Let's see. We'll go back to our purge and seal test. Now we should be able to pull a vacuum on the fuel tank. Verify repair. So our system sealed off. We're going to watch our fuel tank pressure. It should go into the negative numbers here as we're pulling a vacuum in the tank. You can hear the engine start to chuggle. All right, let's seal the system off. Now, the, the amount of decay once the system's sealed is very dependent on, you know, fuel level, fuel temperature, uh, that's going to be the, the two big players. So it's very difficult to determine, you know, do I have a leak based on this decay here? Right now the fuel tank is, um, you know, it's hot. So it's going to have a, a relatively quick decay. But you start to get a feel for it when you've looked at enough of these. You know, do I have a large leak, don't I? Um, you know, and be able to make the call just from looking at that. So, And the rate of decay is not the same as the rate of increase when you just seal the system off and let it build pressure on its own. I've kind of experimented with that a little bit, seeing if they were, you know, kind of related, but they're not. So, anyhow, that's that. Uh, I'm happy with it. We're going to clear the codes and ship it. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, your PO455, I think it was, your gross EVAP leak diagnosis on your Pontiac Torrent. Uh, like I say, I've seen that code led a lot of people astray, so I just kind of wanted to share that with you. And now I'm getting really dark. And, uh, you know, just show you, you know, my approach on it. We do, you know, a bazillion EVAP codes here because we live in the Rust Belt. So you get a pretty good system on how you, you know, kind of go through them and get them figured out. So uh, that's it. Any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comment box below. Uh, find us on our socials. Find us on Patreon. If you love what we do and you want to support us, we do appreciate that. Appreciate all the support and love that we get from there. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.